Last week we showed you how to lay pavers in the landscape, whether that was for a foundation, a patio, or a sidewalk. Another option which might be a little bit easier than pavers is to use crushed gravel. Now that might seem as easy as just putting out the gravel and then walking on it, but if you've ever walked in loose gravel or pea gravel in the playground, it's sort of like walking on sand in the beach and it can be a little bit tricky to really traverse it as your feet try to sink into that crushed gravel. So today we're looking at a couple of materials that might help stabilize that gravel. Now there's a few different options that you can use. Um, one is a preformed plastic material like this that actually will lock together as you can see here. Now these are nice because it's a matter of just snapping them together and then filling them with gravel. However, they do limit you a little bit because they are a predetermined shape that you're getting here. While you can make them larger or smaller, they still have this square shape to them, which means it kind of limits you on curves and other things that you might want to do with this. Now another alternative that you might try is something like this, which is a woven uh, fabric. And as you can see here, as we pull it apart, it creates that honeycomb uh, shape, which then allows us to fill that with crushed gravel. So today we're gonna look at using this. The nice thing about this material is because it is flexible, we can actually use it on curves in a path, it also is easy to cut with scissors and you can staple it to kind of hold it together and that's actually how you stabilize one piece to another is just using a stapler. So before we get started, there's a couple of things that you're gonna need. First of all, you're gonna need the actual material that you choose to use. And then you'll also need a couple of other things that you probably have in your garden shed already. One being a shovel, a rake, um, a hammer. And then one thing that I always have in, in my uh, garden shed that I just love to have are these landscape staples. Um, they tend to come in really handy for different things. They are used for putting down a weed fabric and things like that, but they're just really handy to have to pin stuff down, especially in our Oklahoma winds. So we're going to use these to actually tack this material to the ground, and we'll use that with our hammer to get those into the ground. The other thing you want is um, either scissors or a razor, something to actually cut this material. As you can see here, we're probably gonna have to cut this when we get to the end of our hoop house here. And the other thing is, um, while the width looks a little bit longer, as you pull this out, it actually will shrink in that width a little bit. So you don't wanna just go ahead and cut this thinking this is the width I'm gonna need because we gotta make sure that that width is what it is once it's expanded. Now. Typically, if you were to do this, you'd probably go ahead and lay out all of this material in this uh, square footage of our hoop house. But you can see we kind of went ahead and did two rows of this and then installed the gravel and now we're doing a third row here. So you can do it a couple of different ways, um, but we're going to go ahead and finish off this last row here and show you how to do that. The first thing is, is we're going to um, use our landscape staples. We've got it butted up to our corner here. Now, if you were doing a sidewalk or something like that, you would want to make sure that if you want this gravel to be flush with the soil surface, that you actually excavate the depth of this material. So you can see it's about two inches deep. So you'd want to excavate that two inches to lay this down in there so then your gravel would be smooth with that soil surface. Or if you're using pavers or something on the edging, then that would kind of hold this in place. Now here, instead of pavers on the edging, we basically have um, some square tubing that's the frame of our hoop house. And so it actually works really well. This depth of this material is flush with our uh, perimeter of our hoop house. So we didn't need to excavate anything. So we're gonna go ahead and pin this in on the edge of our hoop house here and we've used landscape staples to anchor it in. Again, you wanna make sure you've anchored one side as you draw that out. And as we did that, we also uh, stapled with uh, those landscape staples along the edge. Um, and then finally, we had to cut the trim on the other end um, and we used landscape staples to hold it so that it didn't spring back to our original side. Finally, we then trimmed it along one edge because we didn't need quite the same width as what it came in. 
Now the nice thing about uh, this material is you can use a stapler, um, just a paper stapler to actually staple it to any other pieces that you might be laying next to it to kind of hold that grid network together. You can also use landscape staples. We've done that in a couple of places as well. Finally, the other thing you want to do is put some staples or something to kind of anchor the material um, in the center as well because it's important to um, anchor it down so that it's flush with the, with the soil surface so that when we're filling it with gravel, it doesn't work its way underneath that grid and actually lift the grid. So you can do that with landscape staples or you can use a piece of wood to kind of put some weight on it as you fill it with gravel. The other thing you'll notice is um, I have a board here because if we were to do a large uh, surface area of this and you have to get back into that center and work with it, now you don't want to just step on this material with your feet because it will actually crush that honeycomb, um, but you can use a board to walk on it because that will spread out your weight and allow you to get in there to staple those seams together. At this point, once we've got our honeycomb all laid out, stretched out, it's got good contact with that soil surface, we're ready to fill it with gravel. Now we're using a crushed gravel and what we're going to do first, instead of just filling it and going, we're going to actually put some, uh, a fair amount in each corner to stabilize it so that it doesn't stretch or bend too much more on us um, and to kind of reaffirm and anchor it down and then fill it in. So, once you've got your gravel shoveled in, you might take a, the opposite end of a rake so it doesn't hook on it, but actually kind of spread that material in a little bit. Now you can see there's a bit of a color difference on our gravel here, and that's simply because this gravel that we're putting in is, is wet. And so once it dries, it's going to match just fine. Now we're going to have to let it settle a little, a little bit, and there will be some settling, so you might have to come back in with a little bit more gravel as it weathers a bit. Um, and the other thing is, is if you want something that's a little more decorative than this crushed gravel, at this point you could top dress it with another inch of more of a decorative material. But if you're looking to add gravel, what this does is it really provides a nice stable foundation for you to walk on or to set uh, tables on or, or benches or anything else that you might want to make a foundation for. So in that regard, it's really nice. If you're looking to incorporate gravel into the landscape, you might think about using a gravel or grid stabilizer. And depending on your intention, whether you want to drive on it or you just want to set something on it, what size gravel material you want to use will dictate kind of what type of material um, or grid stabilizer that you want to incorporate. But I would highly recommend using a gravel grid stabilizer of some form if you're looking at incorporating gravel because it'll give you that ease of walking through it without having to walk through sand. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.